right, so what I did with this one is, you know, and I, and I wanted to start with a quote, I like to start with quotes a lot, is, you know, the single biggest uh, problem with communication is the illusion that it took place. So a lot of times what I hear from people is, I'm posting and nobody's, you know, it's not doing anything. Like I hear that, you know, more often than not. It's like, why, are, why am I not getting anything out of my Instagram? I don't necessarily understand. Like I keep posting stuff, but like there's no return. And yeah, that's the truth. Like, you know, you could post stuff all day long. And if you're not connecting with the person on the other edge of the screen, wherever that screen is, it's not going to work. So what the focus of this is, is like how to actually connect and engage with the people that are in the world. And it's not, um, there's some art to it. It's not just a science, but what I'll say is, is like, there are certain trend lines that you're going to see throughout this presentation that will help you better connect with everybody that's out there and give yourselves an advantage. Um, obviously we're talking about Instagram. My, the thing that I put out and I thought this was funny. So I, I don't know if you guys realize this, but 30 under 30 is a big resource for me. We've talked about this before, won the award years ago. There's such an awesome network of, um, you know, really elite realtors that are a part of that. And knowing, you know, that I rely on these people heavily, um, I always put stuff out to them and ask them the question. Like before I do an event, you know, more often than not, it's to see like, what are your thoughts? Because I always want to get a consensus and get some feedback from other people around the country. You know, what is, what does this look like for you? What success look like and, and what have you. So, for this particular one, I put out you know, the question, what's the best advice um, you know, for Instagram for real estate? And the feedback was limited. I'm just gonna be honest with you. It wasn't like, like sometimes I get crazy engagement and people you know, write all sorts of interesting things. This particular feedback could be summed up in one word and the answer is reels. So everybody kept to, you know, it's not that they didn't, I didn't, they didn't respond. I got people that responded, but everybody kept pointing to Instagram reels, Instagram reels. That's the way you build with Instagram is reels. So it makes sense. I mean, Instagram, if you think about it years ago, you know, when, um, you know, Google bought YouTube, what was the big deal? They all wanted to push people towards video because they knew that video was where, what people cared about. That's what, you know, was engaging because people don't like to read. You hear me say that over and over again, like it's unfortunate, but it's true. Like people want to engage with video. So knowing that, like and knowing Reels is such a big deal today, we are gonna talk about that, but here's the thing that I didn't want to do in this session. I didn't want to get up here and say, Reels is the thing to do, and this is how you do a Reel. You, that's like, we hear that stuff at nauseam, like, you know, we always hear like, almost like this is like the, the textbook, how, like what to do, how to do it, but we don't really bring it to life in some of these presentations because that's not good enough. It's not good enough to know that I just gotta do a reel. Like that's not helpful information for you. And quite honestly, like you don't need me to be a how-to guide. Like you could go on Google and you could type in, how do I create a reel? And it'll show you a video that it'll explain exactly how to create a reel. So for the people that are in here that are like, I want the absolute basics, I'm going to touch on certain basics, but that's not this session. That's really not. This session is going to be more geared towards like really three things is the way that I was thinking about how to, how to approach this. And then I settled on a fourth. So the three things that I was thinking about is the first one is structure. Like how do you structure these posts and all of that? I'm not going to spend a crazy amount of time on structure, just being real. The second thing is style. Like style is a big thing. You know, do you have a style that connects with the people you're trying to connect with? We're going to touch upon different people's styles and that's something that we're going to talk about. But the honest truth is you have to come up with your own style. Like that's a big piece of this is like, it's your business. You have to make it your business and come up with a style that resonates to you and to the people that you're trying to connect with. The next thing is trends. We are gonna talk about trends. I'm not gonna spend, you know, I could get up here and say, here are the 10 best apps to use for, I'm not doing that. Like there's, there's too many people that like do like all these appy hours and all that crap. And like, I'm just not, I'm not really interested in that. I don't think it's gonna be beneficial to you in the long run. I think what makes more sense, and this is the way that I did approach this, is to, you know, kind of encompass structure, style, and trends and throw it all into people because Ultimately, this business is about people. And 
what I felt like made way more sense to how to present Instagram is to say, you know what? Let me show you people that I feel are doing this on a very high level. Not I feel, forget my emotions. They are doing this on a very high level. And then pulling pieces of what it is they do to show you maybe what you could do in your business as an influence. And some of these things you're gonna see are duplicated. So it's not like you know, people do only one thing and that's it. You know, there, are, there are things that you'll see over and over again um, you know, duplicated from one account to the other and it's because they work. So it's, you know, there is a little bit of a science to this as much as it's an art. And I think that like, I'm hoping that this presentation helps you realize certain things that you could do to really give yourselves an advantage and not come in a month from now and say, I'm doing all this stuff on Instagram and it's not getting me a return. I'm gonna tell you right now, years ago I heard this and it blew my mind. I was, I was talking to an executive at Facebook and they were given a presentation and what they talked about and like most, I would say that most people in here, if not all of you are on Facebook, like most people in the world are on Facebook. And the reality is if, if you ask Facebook who owns Instagram, Facebook has gone on record saying there's about a 16% or 16 times, not percent, 16 times more um, likelihood of you getting business off of Instagram than there is Facebook which is nuts, like 16 times. Like if, you, if I said you're 16 times more likely to get a piece of business doing a mail out than you are doing an open house, most of you are gonna start sending mail outs. Like the point is, is you know, it's the return is what we're looking for, the return on your time if nothing else. So I'm gonna go with 10 different um, influencers, let's call them that, that I wanted to bring up, uh, kind of 10, and you'll understand that in a second. Um, the first one is actually not in real estate. And I know that may seem weird because we want to connect to people in real estate. And what I would just give you to just a framework for this, I would strongly consider you guys follow all the people that I'm showing you because you're going to learn from them. Like that's the whole point of this is like me kind of picking and choosing people that I think will give you, um, you know, the best advantage if you follow them. So the first one is Jason Pantana. What I did to make it very easy is I showed you exactly what um, their, uh, their profile looks like, and then I pulled their actual handle down below. So I don't know, I, I see Tim uh, shaking his head. Jason used to work for Coldwell Banker. So I know Jason really well, he's a very nice man. Um, he used to do events for us, he did all sorts of stuff for us. He's, he's, really brilliant is the, is the honest truth. Jason now works for Tom Ferry and his whole entire mission at this point is to essentially create great content for realtors to learn how to do better on social media, specifically Instagram and a lot of video based stuff. He does a fantastic job. I'm going to go through some quick points about, you know, that Jason put up that I thought were useful. I would, you know, there is like uh, an ocean worth of information that he puts out there. So I am just scratching the surface, you know, just to be clear, you got to do, do your own research on him. But what I will say about what he put out that I found interesting is it kind of like weaves into a lot of the other speakers or a lot of the other influencers rather that I'm about to speak about. So one thing that Jason put up recently, it says your content deserves to be seen. So publish it everywhere. Now, this is a theme that you've heard me say in a million different ways, whether you realize it or not, it's, it's important to me. People ask me all the time, what's the best way to build my business? And I view real estate as a web. Like, if you're, you know, if you're building a real estate business, you're, you're really like weaving a web and you're trying to capture leads or people, whatever you wanna call them, you're trying to capture them in different ways. And if you think of a spider web, like if you had one string, they're not catching a lot of flies. That's just not how it works. So one string in real estate might be, um, let's just use mail outs. So I'm sending a mailer. All right, great, send a mailer. But the thing about sending a mailer is like, what do you have on that mailer to capture people? Now, one of the things that I've always promoted is like, if you're trying to capture people, why don't you capture people with, we could use QR codes, we could use vanity URLs to push people to a landing page. You could push people to your website. Now you're starting to create a little bit of a web. It's not just one string. You're trying to capture people in different ways. What Jason is saying in this post is he said, every single time you put a post on Instagram, 
make it into a blog post. So I haven't spoken much about this at all, but we have Moxie that's rolling out. When Moxie rolls out and it really gets going, you're gonna have a blog feature within Moxie. Great, create a blog. So like, that's an easy thing now. Every single time you do an Instagram post, you're just pushing it to Moxie. Recap your content in a weekly email. So like if you're starting to build content on Instagram, you could just compile that and put it out into an email form and now you're pushing it out. Obviously you're not gonna put everything you put on Instagram out there, but there might be certain talking points that could double and now it's like syndication. You're doing one thing of work and it's getting published in a million different places. Publish it on Pinterest. I'm not very big on Pinterest. Some people love it, but you know, that's something that he pushed out. Facebook groups. We talked about this in you know, several sessions more recently. It's like, all right, like the first Friday of every month, you're allowed to talk about your business. Great. Use some awesome content that you put out there on Instagram and push it out to a Facebook group to try to capture people. So, you know, Google uh, business profile is another one. I don't know how many of you guys think about your Google business profile, but you should. I can tell you right now, it drives business. There is no question about it, it drives business. Happy birthday. You. You're welcome. Um, all right, so when he started putting this stuff together, I wanna show you this in action because it really does take, take form when he actually starts to, uh, to piece it together. Bear with me one second, I apologize. All right, so I'm gonna show you this post this is a post that he put up there. And don't worry about the content. The content is completely irrelevant. That's not what the purpose of this is. So he puts this post out there. It's from Twitter. So he wrote a tweet. He basically did a screenshot of that tweet and he put it out on Instagram. Okay, pretty basic. Like that's not, that in and of itself doesn't mean anything other than the fact that he's getting a piece of content and he's getting two different sources out of one piece of content, which makes sense to me. But what he does with this is awesome. So what he did was this. First of all, I just pointed out that it was on Twitter. The next thing is this particular post was not really a post. And, and I know, or excuse me, yeah, it was not a static picture. That's a better way of saying it. What he did was is he recorded it as a one second video. So all he did was did a screen recording of his Twitter feed of that one post. Now, why does that matter? Why does that make any sense? Like, Here's the cool part about it is, this is one second video is now a reel. I just said to you before that reels get better traction than individual posts, they do. The other thing is, when you have a one second video, what happens on Instagram is it repeats itself. It just repeats itself. So if you watch a video, it goes from the beginning to the end and then back to the beginning. That's how it works. So. If you have a one second video, I might watch that video 25 times as I'm trying to read through this because it's like maybe it takes me 20 seconds to, to actually read the message that he posted. So what if you did like a monthly market snapshot and said, here's what the Maplewood market's doing right now. Like, and now you're putting that into a video form. That video form is one second long. Every single time people are reading through it, they're watching it 25 times. What do you think is going to happen in terms of the amount of you know, views that you're getting on your video? It goes up significantly. So I actually did a video. I don't know if you guys saw this because I was testing some stuff out while I was putting this together. Yesterday morning, I was, uh, two mornings ago, excuse me, I was you know, at my house. I was laying down and both, you know, two of my girls came into the room. Hello. Two of my girls came into the room and jumped on me. And we're like, daddy, good morning, and blah, blah, blah. And they were like, can we take a picture? And I was like, of course. So we took a picture, that's the picture. I put it up as a reel, just because I said, you know what, let me, let me do two seconds, three seconds, whatever it is. You know, I put it up. That picture, as of, you know, 24 hours later, got 1,500 views. It's a lot. I only have like 1,800 people that follow me or something like that. I don't even know how many people I have follow me, somewhere in that range. But it's not like um, maybe even less than that, maybe 1,000 people follow me. Like I'm not, I haven't been trying to promote my Instagram for years. That's not like you know, one of my focuses. I run brokerages. So from, from that perspective, like I just started doing this and in the first one I did, 1,500 people connected with me. What have you guys done in the past week that connected with 1,500 people? Probably not much. I mean, and even if this is, you know, 
let's just say that's a thousand people that watched it multiple times or 500 people that watched it multiple times. What have we done in the last week that connected with 500 people or 100 people even? Like there are very few things that we do along those lines. This was an example that's clearly personal, it's not business related, but it works for everything. So find some pretty cool content that could keep people engaged, turn it into a reel, a one second reel, even though it's a screenshot, and watch your clicks just rise steadily. Another thing that Jason does that I really like is he'll do these like basically carousel reels, so, or carousel posts rather. So this was a carousel that he did. He said, how do you get engagement on Instagram? And he put a post up and he had five different you know, uh, uh, slides that you could look at. So comments is one thing, hearts and likes, time spent, profile taps, saves. This is how the algorithm works. So I'm telling you this, like I'm not trying to just throw information your way, I wanna show you how to use it. But when you really think about it, the question that you should be asking yourself is how can I produce more comments, likes, profile taps, saves, and time spent? Like that's what you need to think about. And I'll give you an easy example and I'm gonna show you this in, you know, in, in actual form later. Well, every single time you put a post, what if you ask a question at the end of your post? It's a simple strategy. Just like, hey, what'd you think about this? Like, tell me what you love the most about blah, whatever it is. Well, if you put that out there, aren't you gonna get more comments? Of course you are, you're gonna get more engagement. And here's the crazy thing is, as soon as somebody engages with your comment, write them back. Now, instead of getting one, you got two comments. Like, the more engagement, it's social media. Like, the whole point of it is to try to connect with people. So, it's a very easy strategy, but ask a question at the, every, at the end of every one of your posts to just build the amount of content that you're going back and forth on. That's an easy example. There are a lot of examples that we'll talk about. I'll give you one other one. Sometimes you say like, you'll see this a lot. You'll see somebody put a post and you'll see like, for the whole article, go to my profile page. And it, the link is in my profile. Well, what are they doing there? They're basically getting people to go profile taps. Like you're getting people back to your profile. That's the whole point of it. Number two, and I will go back on a couple points to Jason Pantana um, because I really do think that he does a nice job. So I don't even know this next person, but she does a phenomenal job on Instagram. Glenda Baker is her name. So Glenda Baker, um, she's an Atlanta realtor. Um, she is absolutely fantastic. I think she might be the, I don't know, she claims that I don't, I don't really, like haven't done any research on this, but she, I think she's the number one real estate agent on TikTok. So she's engaged on social media. This is a business plan for her. There's no doubt about it. But I wanna show you certain things that I learned from Glenda because if you watch her stuff, you're like, whoa, in terms of like when you start realizing how she pieces this together. Can I move on from her name? Mm -hmm. All right. So first thing I wanna show you is, you guys all see down here, these are called highlights. So I wanna show you favorite quotes. And I think about this a lot. You know, we're, there's so many times where I go on you know, Instagram and I see somebody that posted a quote that I'm like, I love that quote. <laughs> well, quotes are something that are, is very shareable. You know, people connect to a quote, it's such an easy thing to connect to people. And what Glenda did a really nice job with is she has all of her highlights are quotes, but she did a bunch of things with this that I wanna point out. So I just took a hand, like three quotes that she put up. I, I trust the next chapter because I know the author. I love that. Well, she basically put it back to the person who said it. So she created the post and then she tagged the person who said it. So A, it's definitely something that, like if you think about it, think about somebody who got divorced or is getting a divorce. Like, aren't, don't they wanna be empowered with like my next chapter of my life? Of course they do. Like that's a big piece of you know, the next step and feeling good about life. And if you're somebody who's the friend of somebody getting divorced, doesn't it make sense that you would tag them in something like that? Of course you would, because you're trying to get them to feel good that you're the author of your next chapter. Well. She's putting that out, and then she's also tagging back the person who said it. So what does that do? It's connecting to her network, and it's connecting to the network of the person she said it to. Like, it's, it's now, again, social. It's building this, like, relationship. Best quotes ever. She did the exact same thing. 
She does this over and over and over again. And it's not stuff that's eating up her feed, just to be clear, because she's putting them into this one section of highlights. So if you go into highlights, you're seeing all of these different things that she's putting out there and it's tracking over time. So I didn't, I didn't show it in this slide, but if you, um, if you actually click on that, you know, those quotes, there's like a million little quotes that add up over time. Well, all of that is trending towards Glenda. So anybody who shares anything along those lines, it's going back to her. It makes sense. When you look at, well, first of all, people love quotes, tagging other people, it taps into their network. So that was the point of this. And what I'm gonna do, I haven't really done it so much you know, up until this point, but the rest of this presentation is similar to this. What I do is I'm actually, I'm, I'm adding the takeaway. So it's basically gonna show you the point and then it's gonna give you the takeaway from the point. She also does this. She created a look. Like, and I'm not saying that every single person in here should create a little cartoon of themselves, but the reality is, is some of you may want to. Like, it's not an expensive thing to invest in to create, like, you know, a look that's you. Like, you know, you could, a couple hundred dollars, probably less than that, on, you know, on Fiverr, and you could get something done. So what she's doing, though, is she has a little signature, she has this look, and when she puts out posts that are, let's just say, quotes, well, now you know it's Glenda. Like, and now it's like kind of like almost this trend that you're like almost looking for what the next thing she's coming out with is. And you're gonna see you know, a, a lot of trends along those lines. So the idea is to create a look and it doesn't have to be a little cartoon, it could just be an email signature or excuse me, uh, not an email signature specifically, but a, an Instagram signature that you're just dropping in on all your posts. It could be the framework that you have that like all of your posts have the same look and feel in terms of the template of it. There's different ways to, to structure that. So I'm gonna go back to Glenda and I'm gonna show you what she has in her profile because profiles are, are overlooked. Like a lot of times we're so worried about putting out content that we don't think so much about this piece of it. So forget about the fact that she's top 1% and you know ambassador, I don't care about all that. Put whatever you want up here but what I thought was really interesting is actually this piece. Click the link below to work with me, Glenda. So one of the big questions that like, people always ask is, how do I pull people from Instagram into real life? I wanna turn them into a client. Like, and you know what? Like, sometimes they'll slide into your DMs and like, you know, start hitting you up in your DMs. Like, all right, well, that's, that's one way to you know, direct messages. That's one way for them to potentially connect with you. Yeah, that's a, that's a way, but like I personally, I don't know, maybe I'm old school, but I want their contact information. I wanna be able to pick up the phone and call them if I need to. I want to have their email address. I, yes, I wanna connect with them on Instagram. I'm not saying that that's the only thing to do is to, is to uh, you know, get their contact information, but how do, I, how do I put them on my mailing list if I don't have anywhere to send it? Like, I want to connect with them beyond Instagram. That's the goal for me. So what she does, and I thought was brilliant, and actually I'm gonna go back to Jason Pantana, they both have this set up. So if you click this link, it brings you to something that looks like this for each of them. Notice the similarity? It's the same exact site. They're both pushing to the same place. What it is is when you go there, first of all, you could connect with her on all of her different sites or him on all his different sites. It's a very easy way to get people to connect with you on different platforms, which ultimately, like, that's what you want. You want people to connect with you in different ways because different people, this goes back to that, that um, quote that I said before, is like, you know, you want to communicate. Like, you want to make sure that you're communicating to them. There are people in this room that are phenomenal at Instagram. There are other people that are terrible at it, that they might be phenomenal at LinkedIn or phenomenal at Facebook or YouTube or whatever. And you know what? Your clients and the rest of the world are the exact same way. Like not every person for whatever reason connects with one platform. So if you're creating content that's being syndicated and then you're connecting people on different platforms, they're gonna find you where they feel comfortable, which is ultimately what we're looking to do. This particular site, I would encourage you to, to take a picture of this. Is that what that was? That's what that was, yeah. Did you think I was gonna leave you hanging? <laughs> I'm gonna take a quick sip of water. But, um, so that site, tell me when everybody's good or if you need more time. 
that site is A, it's free, or B, it's paid for, depending on how advanced you want to get with it. So if you want to use the basics, uh, and I, don't, I, I have not done a deep enough dive to tell you like, where the line is drawn on free versus premium, um, but very simply, it brings you to this site, it centralizes your online presence, and it allows you to create all these different things. There's pricing right on the site, so you don't have to think about it. And the pricing, I think the most expensive one's like $20 a month or something along those lines. But I wanna show you some of the ways that this is being used because it's really cool. So you create this site and it, it obviously like, you get to put whatever you want in terms of the look and feel. When you go to it, this is um, Glenda's. So I wanted to show you a couple things that she put out there. One of them was watch my exclusive Instagram series. So this is a bubble that she put underneath here. Like that bubble I thought was an interesting one because how many of you guys have an Instagram series? Probably not most of you. I mean, maybe a handful in this room, if any. So what she does with her Instagram series is pretty simple. They're regular posts, except here is where they, she creates the series with the hashtags. So she has a various different ones, Glenda Baker, all this stuff. These are channels. You have to view them as a channel. If I go on my, my TV, and I, for those of you who haven't cut the cord, if you go on your TV and you start clicking through and you say, I want sports, you go to ESPN. If you want movies, you go to HBO. If you want TV shows, you go to ABC. Like whatever it may be, you're going to different channels. Maybe CNN for the news. Those are channels. These are channels. If you do a search right now for Glenda Baker, you're only getting her feed. You're gonna get everything that she does. Glenda Baker, Glenda Baker, Glenda Baker. If you go online and you try to look for certain topics that she's creating, she's creating a channel for it. And then if she's sitting in front of a seller and the seller says, I wanna know about staging a home, hashtag staging a home, hashtag Glenda Baker. Now all of a sudden she's getting all of her content and she could sit there and show them, hey listen, like this is what I've created along these lines. Like, I, you know, yeah, I've been doing this for years and this is at a very high level and this is what it looks like. Like if you wanna get the most out of what you're creating, start to think strategically about what your channels are. They're just hashtags, it's simple. And what she's also doing to connect it further is she's creating highlights. So that, that goes back to what I was showing you before. I don't know if I showed it, I'm sorry. Um, create a series using hashtags. But that whole thought process of highlights is also where you could store those pieces of content, you know, in that, in below your profile. Very simple, you know, thing to, to think about, but you have to have some organization to it and a strategy. The next thing that she put up there that I thought was interesting is hire me, I can help you buy, sell, invest uh, in, in uh, your area, or find a Glenda in your area, which I thought was really cute. If you think about it, like, if people are connecting with you, they want you. But you don't sell real estate everywhere. But you could connect them with somebody who's great in a specific area. Welcome. Um, with that in mind, like, what I would do is I would write, like, I actually, I just would steal this. I just would get rid of Glenda. But, <laughs> but the whole point of it is, is like, you know, hire me. I'll help you with all these things. Or find you a Michael in wherever. Like, because that's what they want. They want you, they're connecting with you. Well, you probably know people that are like you, like-minded, will care for the clients and everything else in a specific area. Steal it. <laughs> when, when you click on this, when you click on this, I thought this was also awesome. So it doesn't just send people to some random website that says, this is my website, here's why you should go with me, blah, blah, blah. At the point in time that they've clicked, now think about this, where they are. They went to her page, her Instagram page. They've clicked in her profile feed on the link in her bio for more information, and they get a list of different things. If they click on this, you don't have to sell them anymore. You already got them. They're there already. They went through three different channels to get to this point. You don't have to sell them on like, here's all the information that you need to know about Maplewood real estate. Forget all that crap. This is where it takes them. Put your contact information here and I'll get back to you. Like, because you got them already. You have to think that way. Like if, you're, if the thought process is you're gonna have them jump through another hoop, you're selling after the close. You already have them. But you should have something like this 
on your page because you're trying to pull their information so you could add them to all the other things and put them into that web that we were talking about. Jason Pantana, what's the top thing that he has on there? Join Jason's VIP email list. They're all trying to grab the data. That's the takeaway, is basically turn followers to clients by grabbing their, collecting their data and getting their contact information. Bear with me one second, this is driving me insane. I keep trying to see the next slide and this chair's in the way and I'm like, ugh. So the, uh, the next piece of this, I, I thought this was pretty awesome, is Glenda Baker, and, and I'm not saying that you guys should be doing this right now, like, but I just want you to see creatively where this goes. So, all right, what did she do? She created this massive following on Instagram and on TikTok and all that other stuff. It's directed towards the general public. She's trying to pick up clients from the general public. What do you think residually happens from this? Don't you think other agents are gonna reach out to her and be like, wow, this is amazing, how do you do this? All that other stuff. Of course, like that's just natural. Like she probably gets bombarded with people that are asking her questions about what it is she's doing because she's doing it at such a high level. So because she's smart, she said, you know what? I'm gonna solve for this problem. And she created Glenda Baker's 100 video ideas, Glenda's guides. So when you go to that page, what happens? You click on that page and you pay her money. <laughs> she will sell it to you. That's not stupid. Like, that's, that's smart as could be. Because what she's doing is, is she's listening to people's questions and she's solving for them. Now, anybody who's like, oh, I need information, here's the link. Like, she doesn't even have to think about it. And she's getting paid for it because she's already did all the work related to this. Questions into opportunities. We have to think along those lines. I'm not saying you should charge people for information, but what I'm trying to say is, is like, you know, sometimes the residual is more valuable than what, you know, what you're actually producing. Years ago, I don't know if you guys remember this, but I talked about, I did a whole session on um, I don't, I, kerosene, I'm gonna butcher this a little bit, but kerosene, when they produced kerosene, it was for lights. It was for, they were basically lighting up your households with kerosene. Well, that was great up until Thomas Edison invested the, invented the light bulb. And then it's like, well, what do we need kerosene for? It's way more deadly. There's more fires that start from it and everything else. Well, they said, what are we gonna do with all this oil that we're producing and you know, the kerosene that we're getting from it? Well, what they did was they realized that the byproduct of producing kerosene was gasoline. And gasoline, at the same time, the you know, cars came out. So now all of a sudden they use you know, gasoline to power cars and that was way more profitable than kerosene ever was. You have to start thinking about what is the byproduct of what you're doing. Because if you think that way, you'd be surprised you're probably creating a lot of things, content for yourself that will give you more and more energy that you're, you don't have to recreate and reinvent every single thing that you do and use it over and over again. The next thing I wanted to show you is, so she does videos. She's freaking awesome at videos, like absolutely awesome. But she does something about videos that I thought was, was really interesting. Where's her face? Where is she looking? Is she looking at the camera? Nope. So how many of you guys in here are afraid to be on camera? A lot. A lot of people don't want to be on camera. I don't like the way I look and all that other crap. So I understand that. Like, and it's an uncomfortable thing sometimes to be on camera. Like, I've heard that a million times over, it's uncomfortable. However, if you had a client that called you up and said, can you come over to my house? I wanna ask you a million questions. You'd run over there, like, oh, I'm gonna get a listing. Like, you'd go over there, you wouldn't be like, I can't show up, I don't like the way I look. You wouldn't even think about it, you would go there and try to get a piece of business. And the thing is, you would sit across from that client and you would answer questions all day and all night until you got that listing because that's how we run, we, you know, that's how we're all built. We sniff a piece of business and we're like, let's go do this, let's help this person. So the thing is this, like, and I, it's funny because I'm, I, I'm, I'm in this field, clearly. Like, I'm watching it with like a, you know, a very critical eye as to seeing what these people are doing. And you know what, it took me a while, and then all of a sudden it was like an aha, like light bulb went off in my head. I'm watching her videos, and the whole time I'm watching her videos, I'm thinking that she's being interviewed. 
that somebody else is in the room that is asking her questions. And she's like, oh, well, let me tell you about that. Like, and she's going to this whole thing. Nobody's in that room. Nobody. She's having a conversation with her and the camera. That's it. But you know what it is? As a viewer, I don't think that. I think that this person is being interviewed by everybody and their mother. Like, wow, everybody wants to know her opinion. Like, because that's what it feels like. Nobody is even asking her her opinion. Seriously, <laughs> nobody is asking her her opinion. Not one person. All she's doing is saying, you know what? I know people want to know about this topic, whatever the topic is. And if this person and this person and this person want to know about this topic, I bet you everybody wants to know about it. So I'm going to create a piece of content as if I'm being interviewed and I'm going to answer that question. And I'm not going to look at the camera because I want people to feel like I'm being interviewed and answering somebody's question. How brilliant is that? It's absolutely brilliant. It's so easy. It's the easiest approach that you could ever imagine. Just answer people's questions and look to the side. Like that's all she's doing. And I'm telling you, it tricks people. There's no question about it. It tricks people. It tricked me. Unique filming style. The viewer feels like they're entered into a conversation. Like you walked into a room and she's having a conversation with somebody else across from her and you're learning from her. It's a great strategy. And it's such an awesome strategy for people that are uncomfortable in front of the camera. It's perfect. And by the way, you really want to cheat with this? Film yourself in different locations so they think that everybody wants to hear about you all over the place. <laughs> Number three. Matt Lionetti. Anybody know who this is? Yes. Yes. This guy is insane. <laughs> I'm not. I'm, well, yes, I am. So, can you guys pull this up? Pull this up and just watch it for a second. Put the volume on, and be prepared to laugh your asses off. <laughs> this, these guys, these this guy's nuts. But I can tell you right now, I don't think I've ever laughed so hard. At, at what somebody. <laughs> I'm going to turn the AC up a little bit. We good? It's in the presentation, so don't worry about it. So, follow him. I, I literally was like, he's insane. And the things that he puts up, you're just like, oh my God, I can't believe he put that up on some of these things. For those of you who didn't pull this up, he basically says, I was really worried that Robert, uh, uh, robots were going to replace us in real estate. And then I was standing at the Walmart and I watched somebody get confused about how to scan an item or whatever it was. And I said, we're going to be safe. Like, and it's the truth. Like, it's, you know, you, you, like little things like that we don't think about, but real estate transactions are not easy. They're just not easy. And the fact that there's, you know, when you watch something like that by this man, I don't care if, it's, if you're in real estate, if you're not in real estate, you realize that, all right, maybe this is harder than I think. Like, you just, you, that's the takeaway. And you crack up laughing, and you can't watch him and not like him. Like, he's just too funny. He's too funny. So I'm not going to spend a lot of time talking about him because some of his stuff is vulgar, is probably the best way to say it. But what I will say is make people laugh. Like, that's an engaging quality. Like, if you make people laugh, you're get, you got them. Like, I could tell you right now, like, that's, there's nothing more I could tell you, you know, that will engage people more than, you know, give them a good time. Make it be entertaining. Again, it's social. You know, if you go out to a dinner party with somebody and you're boring, they don't want to go on another dinner party with you. Like, make them laugh. Number four, the Don McKenna group. So... How many people in here, I don't remember by show of hands, but how many people took the Global Luxury course by a Coldwell Banker? You guys remember her? So Dawn McKenna like did, um, she is a Global Luxury ambassador for Coldwell Banker. 
She does a really nice job. She actually, uh, and just so you know, she has a team that's in Chicago, in Naples, and uh, Hinsdale. She's spread out across the country team-wise. It's a very impressive operation that she runs. So Dawn McKenna, I'm not gonna spend a tremendous amount of time on her, but I just wanna show you some quick hitters off of her that I thought were really good. And I want, you know, one of the reasons why I would suggest following her is she's really good on the lifestyle piece. That's where I feel like she shines, is like curating content that like connects with people and lifestyle and makes them feel like, wow, this is what, you know, what I wanna be a part of. So one thing that she does an awesome job with, she did a, a, a video that was, it was actually kind of funny. Um, it was, costumes, or I say costumes, but they're outfits, fashion to design outfits from the Met Gala. So the Met Gala, whenever it happens every year, like people pay attention to it. It's like page six news. And basically like she took those and then showed rooms in luxury homes that looked like people's outfits. It was a really funny thing when you look at it. And it was something that was like so spot on when you think about like just timeliness to put that content out right then and there. So she puts this out, but here's what I wanted to pay you to pay attention to. Playing Dawn McKenna Group interior design dress up with looks from 2022 Met Gala, which is your fave? She asks a question. I said that to you before, and that is what gets the engagement. It's not like people weren't commenting like, ha ha, funny post. People were like saying, some of them were, but some of them were like, oh, I like the green one. Like she's grabbing people's attention with the video she produces. And then, and by the way, these are still shots. This is not like this crazy professionally produced video, but she puts this together and then she asks the question. She's garnering attention and she's garnering comments. That's what the algorithm looks for. So I'm gonna show you a couple of examples of this real quick and then the next thing that, um, this is another one. What does 1.8 million get you in Western Springs? Let us know what you think. Simple. It's like, it's just basic stuff. You guys, you know, you could go out and take a video, literally a walkthrough video. If you watch her stuff, that's what it is. It's she's grabbing her iPhone or a team member's grabbing her iPhone and they're going through the house and doing a quick video. It's not professionally produced like content. They're going through the video and then all of a sudden she's putting that up with a couple of edits here or there, some music that she's dropping in, which we're gonna to get to. And then she's asking a question. It's a simple concept. Um, he always asks, this is going back to Pantana, he always asks questions in everything he puts out. It's just like, you see these themes over and over again, why they work. Engage through questions. So we talked about hashtags. I'm just showing you what she does in terms of hashtags. Every single time she puts out a piece of content, she's tagging it to locations. She's tagging it to like different channels that she's trying to create. They all do the same thing with this. This is not rocket science. So, I mean, just sit down. And I know that sometimes people feel like this is a waste of my time. It's just social media. It's not a waste of your time. It's what's driving business. Like period. These people are not doing this for their health. Believe me. These are top, top agents in the world of real estate. Interesting observation. She's putting, po I don't know if this is like a good thing or a bad thing. I don't know enough about this to be able to like guide this, but she's actually putting in her comment section, she's also putting hashtags, which I thought was interesting. There's gotta be some reason why it's, you know, it's helping her. So I thought that was something worth looking at. Um, this is such an awesome video that all of you guys should copy. You don't have to watch it right now for the sake of time, but it basically says, ring, ring, Naples is calling, who's picking up, you don't wanna miss this call. All this video is, is she grabbed a template that looks like you know, an iPhone. She just dropped it over still videos and quick, you know, like she built a quick reel. Still videos, uh, still uh, pictures and short videos. And all it is, is just quick pictures, quick videos of Naples just cycling through real quick. Um, I would also recommend that if you, I, I heard it go off, so somebody's watching it. If you, if you go on there, it goes do, 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 whatever the, 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 uh, the ringtone is, and then it turns it into a song, and it's actually kind of catchy, steal the song. Like, you could do the exact same thing in this video, and it's not, by the way, I say steal. 
This is not, everybody does this. This is part of what you're gonna do, so I'm gonna explain. Like, there's, there's audio that trends. Steal her audio, it's great audio for the purpose of what I'm talking about. And do your area. And I guarantee whatever area you serve, if you do this properly, people are gonna be like, that's great. You might get the town to, to, to share it. I mean, that's how good the content is. It's 10 to 15 seconds of, of curated lifestyle. So, I wanna ask you a question. If you were to take, let's just say, you know, 10 pictures around Maplewood, let's just use Maplewood as an example, take 10 pictures around Maplewood, and then take, let's just say five, three second uh, clips around Maplewood as well. And then you were to take that information and you were to drop it into the template that I just showed you with like the iPhone thing, with the music that she did, and create a reel. How long do you think that would take? An hour? Two hours? A half? A couple hours? Okay. Let's just say it took you. Awesome. No, I appreciate your honesty. Like, let's say it takes you all day long. Is that, I mean, is it fair that we could get this done in one day? Yeah. Okay. So, and if you can't, come see me. So, if you could do it in one day, I want to show you this. So, the question was how long does it take to do? The results. 86,000 people watch this reel. 86,000 people. God bless you. I, I understand that. I'm not disagreeing with that. But 86,000 people watched it and 684 people liked it. I can try to find it for you. You just like, you look for, like, I, I'll, find, I'll find the template for you if you really, <laughs> Jamie will find the template. There, the templates are actually really easy to find, believe it or not. There's just like different editing, <laughs> editing software. Uh, please. Time out for a second. Go ahead. If you click on your bio, it's, you should be able to um, save the audio. And you can save the audio you could definitely save. save the audio yeah. Go ahead, Shema. So Jamie is the Canva queen. Um, Canva, C-A-N-V-A. And for those of you guys who need help or you know some direction with Canva, Jamie, raise your hand. Hey guys, Jamie right there is our resident Canva queen. She can help you with Canva. If you got to create templates on that, that's what she does. All right. So. I understand that not every person in here is gonna get 86,000. Okay, what if you get 5,000? Like, there's nothing that you guys are doing in life that is garnering that much attention. It's just not. Like, you could walk down the street naked and you're gonna get less attention. Like, it's just the truth of it. Like, there's just not that many people that we're engaging with on a daily basis to get that many clicks. Like, what have you done to get in front of that many people? There's very few things. Like. If you do this correctly, it has some tremendous life. And I talked about this at our last session when I was talking about Paris and all that other stuff. We are 25 minutes from New York City. Like, who is our feeder market? New York City. How many people are in New York City? What is it, eight million? Like, there's a lot of people there. Like, if you connect with the, you know, the New York City suburb thought process, and you start to build content that's like, you're a half hour from there, but you get this green grass behind me. Like, you're going to connect with these people and you have the largest audience around. Like, you have a much larger audience in this area, you know, with New York City commuters and transplants than she does in Naples, Florida. Like, it's not even close. Tap into it. Number five, Cyrus. So Cyrus is actually a personal friend of mine. He is awesome, I love him. He's a 30 under 30, we met, I wanna say a couple years ago, somewhere in that range, maybe a year ago. Um, but just phenomenal guy. I love the way he approaches the business. Um, and I like some of the things that he does, so I wanted to point them out. So his name is not Cyrus Andre, that, that might be his middle name, I don't even know. Um, his name is uh, Cyrus Mosheni, but online, it's Cyrus Andre. So 
If you go on there and you start looking at it, these are quick hitters, but I think that they're worth pointing out. So one thing that he does is every single time he puts a post or a reel, he puts his own handle on the reel. That's smart. Because if, you're, if anything that you do happens to go viral, they know where to go. They're gonna connect to you. So when all these people are sharing and everything else, they know exactly who to tie it back to and you're, you're building your name and your handle. It's smart. Every single thing you put out there should have, that, have your handle on it. Not like across the middle of the screen, but like in the bottom right hand corner, put it on there, smart. Tag yourself in reels is essentially the point. The next thing that he does, it's him up here. He puts a countdown of how long his, each of his uh, um, reels are. So it will say like 20 seconds and it'll go 19, 18, whatever, all the way down. So when you think about it, people have the attention spans of like a TT fly. Like they're not, they don't have the ability to pay attention very long. But if you see on there that there's a 20 second video, you're like, oh, I'll give it 20 seconds. Like I give you 20 seconds of my life. Well, now you got them for 20 seconds. And if you go back to what I was talking about with Jason Pantana, one of the things he talked about is the time commitment that people give you. The longer you get people committed to a post, the better you're gonna get in terms of results. Like, because that's one of the things that, that guides that algorithm. All we're trying to do is trick an algorithm to push you up higher, because if we do that, you're going to get more people that will like your page and you're gonna get more clients. Please. One other thing that Jason said, which I, I try to remember. Talk louder, please. One other thing that Jason said, which I try to remember when I do videos, um, by the time you said, hi, I'm Tim Tyler, go make, make or make or make or with them Yeah. Start out with something to grab it first. You can tell them who you are there. It's spot on. You're definitely correct. You don't even need to say hi, Michael Panisi at Coldwell Banker. Like I, like I used to tell people to do videos with that to start with. That could be at the end. You're tagged in a million different things. If you set up your profile correctly, they'll find you. Like you need to engage them. That's the most important part. So he's putting this countdown. I think it's an awesome thing to do. Like you're getting people engaged and they, they're making a commitment right then and there. Add a countdown, people know their commitment. Another thing that he does is this is a video, but he puts in these big block letters on the, on the top and the bottom of videos. Now, you don't have to do this for every video. He doesn't do this for every video. But what I find interesting about it is what he's doing is he's connecting certain universal truths or things that people want to hear, let's say is maybe a better way of saying it. And he's putting it in his hashtags and he's connecting up there so people know what they're getting from the onset, as soon as they click on his stuff, they're like, negative energy, not necessary. All right, I'm good with this. I want positivity in my life. Like, now you've sucked them in without even playing one second of his video, you've sucked them in. Use universally accepted truths to gain attention and positivity is strongly welcomed. Like, people want positivity. They turn on the news and they want to jump out of a window. Like, that's the, that's the reality of the world we live in. It's not like sunshine and roses. And whether you guys realize it or not, we're all dealing with something. Everybody's dealing with something. Like, you know, it might be the loss of a loved one. It might be a divorce. It might be, I'm just not happy where my place is in life. People want positivity. Like, the more you can speak to that, the more you can engage people on that front, believe me, it goes viral. That's what people are looking for. The next thing I wanted to talk about is I want to go back to highlights for a second. He does this in a very unusual way and I love what he does. He has all of these are highlights. You could scroll to the left or to the right or whatever it is. Like you could keep scrolling and it's all highlights that he has. So what does he do that's different that I thought was pretty cool? Every single time he goes on a trip anywhere, those become a highlight. So now it's Cyrus in Las Vegas, Cyrus in New Orleans, Cyrus in Switzerland, Cyrus in Madrid, in Indiana, Chicago, wherever. So like rather than just eating up his newsfeed, and I was thinking about myself in Paris. So I did all these posts about Paris. Well, I don't live in Paris. I'm not doing business in Paris. Like it's nice to have these posts, but when people go to my page, like I don't want them to be like Paris, 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 Paris. It has nothing to do with my day-to-day -day life. It's one little piece, one week in my life. Well, he builds that in as part of you know, all the highlights. I thought it was a very unique way of doing it, smart. 
the point is, is the content on his page that is like the relevant content that he's constantly using is driven towards his business. The other fluff, the stuff that's like maybe lifestyle, maybe it's connecting him to a different piece of his world. It's not that it goes away. He's not deleting it, but he's, he's tucking it away in these different things. So if somebody wants to know about Cyrus's experience in Switzerland, great. Kick, click the highlights for Switzerland. Smart strategy. Use highlights to organize your account. That's the point of this. The next thing, how's the market? So Cyrus does an awesome job with this. What he's doing is, and this goes back to what I was talking about before, is he looks like he's being interviewed about how the market is, but he's not. It's the same exact strategy that I was talking about with Brenda. Like, he also puts this in. He's doing, like, for everything that he does, he's putting in captions. So we're gonna talk about both of those things. First of all, back to the interview style, don't look at the camera. Brilliant strategy, he works. Now, why am I bringing this up as a separate point? Because I already spoke to this point. Well, what Cyrus does different than Brenda is he does market updates. He talks about like, hey, this week in the market type of thing. He doesn't literally say it that way. He'll be like, I have something that will blow your mind. Did you know that everybody's screaming about, this is literally taken from this video. Do you know that everybody's screaming about there's no inventory? All you hear is there's no inventory, there's no inventory. Did you know that more homes sold this year than any year in history in his particular area? It's not that there's not homes selling, it's not that there's a lack of inventory, it's that they're selling so quickly that it's not building up. Well, that's a pretty interesting point that nobody's making. So when he talks about like the market it's quick hitters. It might be like one fast point that he speaks about the market that's just an aha thing for people to hear. And he's doing it in an interview style as if he's coaching somebody or he's talking to a client. It's really smart. The next thing is, and I told you I was gonna focus on this, is add captions. Like, you don't have to sit there and type. They do the captions for you. So always add captions, and it works. I did a video last night. Uh, so did anybody see this video? Yeah. So it was a rhyme that I wrote. I wrote that 10 years ago. 10 years ago, I wrote that. Like, somewhere in that range. It might have been longer than that. Like, it was something that was, I was trying to play around with Instagram. I know that I'm going to start marathon training. I know that that's like, this is the time of year I gotta start marathon training. So I know that that was where my head was at, but I was really what I was doing, I wouldn't tell anybody else in the world, I'll tell you guys, is I wanted to test out different ways to, to build Instagram business and some of the tricks for this meeting. So I put together this, I was like, all right, let me record a quick video. So I had this piece of paper of this rhyme that I wrote so long ago, and I said, I'm gonna record this little quick rhyme as like an intro for marathon season. And then I want to try to use all of the, uh, uh, the captions. So I put this up. I have the captions on there. It works. It's been blowing up. I mean, you know how many people? I got 60 people that hit me up like, oh my God. Like, it's just like some silly thing. And by the way, you don't even have to be able to rap to do this. Like, you really don't. Like, I, it's, the funny thing is I recorded this whole entire thing in about four minutes because I didn't even, it was so long ago that I wrote that rhyme that I literally couldn't remember the words to it. So I recorded it one line at a time. <laughs> it was literally one line, read the piece of paper, the next line. You don't even have to be able to do this because it's like, I didn't wanna be looking at a piece of paper, it's silly. So I did it from different directions to make it seem like it was intentional. It was because I didn't even remember what I was reading. Like, and that's how quickly I did it. I just put it together in two seconds the whole point of it is to show you that it's simple to do. Like, it's a simple thing to do. Like, and it doesn't have to be a rhyme, it could be anything, but like, you talk about the market, you throw captions in, really simple, so you don't have to like, ask a million questions about how do I do captions? Like, if you click on this and you know, it sends it to you, it will literally give you a video how to on how to do captions. So, it's a very simple thing, you don't have to think about it. Um, if for whatever reason the captions come out wrong, not a problem. Like you could actually modify the captions. It'll show you how to do that. 
It's, it's super simple. And by the way, my captions, anybody who, who knows Project Purple is what I run for, like Project Purple is all about purple. It's like, you know, purple is pancreatic cancer. So I put the captions in purple. I just modified it to be what I needed it to be. Understood? Number six, Peter Torkin. I am not gonna spend a tremendous amount of time on Peter, but there's a couple points that I thought were interesting. Um, he's Canadian, he runs the agency in Toronto. Very high-end luxury stuff. I think I only have one point on him, although he does have a lot of great content. But the one point I had, and the reason why, if you go on his content, you're gonna see a lot of stuff that's worth repeating, but some of the trends are similar to what I already discussed. But he did something that I had not seen that I was like, this is so perfect for the people that don't have any money to spend on you know, going out and building great video content. And in the same breath, like there's another group that's kind of an offshoot of that where it's maybe not the money, but it's more of like, I don't even know what to, you know, what to do a video of. Well, you don't necessarily have to even do a video to get the results of a video. And I'm gonna explain how that looks. So first of all, let me talk about results. He had 4,500 likes on this particular video. He had 135,000 people watch this video. It's not a video, it's still photos. What the still photos are, it's six pictures that he took. That's it, it's only six pictures. It's, hey, watch this, the before of the house, the after of the house, because he does renovations. And he showed three examples of what it looks like to change, and I encourage you to go and look at this actual post, you don't have to do it now, but it shows you, here was the house, here's what the house looks like. Here was the house, here's what the house looks like. Here was the house, here's what the house looks like. It's a cool video, but it's only stills. Literally, that's all it is. So when you go on there and you watch this, what the takeaway was for me is you don't have to spend money. You don't have to spend any money. This is literally pictures. You don't have to be brilliant at you know, internet marketing to be able to do this. He made it into a reel. And what he did that was really phenomenal is, the, is if you watch the audio, it's like it's right in line with the audio. So he took a little bit of time to edit it. But it's not professionally edited by, any, edited by any means necessary. Not at all. Watch the video, you'll understand what I'm saying. Number seven, luxury listings. So this is, I don't even, I'm assuming that this is somebody who's doing this, like, I, you know, like literally like an agent. I don't even know who the agent is. But luxury listings has 2.4 million followers. That's a lot. And it's probably because they just put up luxury listings and everybody loves to look at nice looking homes. So I'm not expecting you to compete with luxury listings in terms of the amount of people that are going to the, the Michael Panisi page. Of course not. Like it's a different you know, uh, stratosphere that we're trying to you know, tap into. But what I will say that is, a, is an idea worth following with them is if you go on to any one of their reels, up at the top right corner, and this is true for every reel, this is not true for just them, they have this little button that says the audio. So if you click on their audio, some of you guys are nodding, like this is basic stuff. I, I, I don't disagree, but we're gonna kind of take it a little bit more advanced in a second. But you click on that audio and it will give you their audio. What they have done a brilliant job of is tracking audio that's trending. They ride the wave of audio that's trending. So. Use trending audio is, is the takeaway, but now I wanna show you why. First of all, if you happen to tap into the right piece of audio at the right time, it's like a rocket ship. You are going to get so many clicks on whatever it is you're doing, it's going to explode because you just happen to like have the right piece of content with the right audio at the right time that's trending. That's like the holy trinity of sorts when it comes to Instagram. So. If you go to this, you don't have to do it right now, but if you go to this, it's a YouTube video of how to get audio. Like, so it'll show you how to find audio for Instagram and all that stuff, but I'm not even gonna focus on this. I'm gonna go to the next slide. This blog will, and I encourage you to, to take a picture of this. This blog will actually give you all of the trending audio at any given time, and they update it weekly. So when you go on there, if you wanna know what video, what audio is trending so you could kind of like ride that wave at any given time, there you go. 
Every week they put it up. You could just go to that and say, okay, I want to find great audio to help me rise quickly. Now you create content attached to that audio. So, and they literally, it's a blog. It updates every single week. So you never have to think about it again. Number eight, at creators. Anybody follow them? This is Instagram's like creator series. I would 100% follow this one because this is Instagram saying, here's how you do well on Instagram. Like, I don't know why you wouldn't go to the resource. This is the source for this. So if you go on creators, they have all sorts of information, trends that are running, um, anthems. Anthems are songs that are trending. They create all this content and just push it out for you. But they also have tips and tricks. So it's like trending news, it's tips, it's hacks, it's algorithm updates. Everything you need to know to be successful on Instagram, they push out content to do exactly that. It's a really simple strategy is to follow them. Ride the wave of a trend. I can't tell you how important that is on Instagram. If you capture the, a, good, you know, a good piece of content for a specific trend, you will be rewarded for it. All right, anybody on TikTok? I got a couple hands that are like, don't follow me. I'm not on it that well. So I'll be honest with you. I'm on TikTok. I couldn't even tell you my name on TikTok. Like I do nothing on TikTok whatsoever. Um, for some of you who have kids, they probably love TikTok. They're all over it. And I know that there's value in TikTok, but it's almost like I don't need another thing like is where my head is. Um, so I'm not telling you to to jump on TikTok and become like a, an influencer on TikTok. That is not the takeaway on this at all. But you should pay attention to what I'm saying whether you're on TikTok or not. So the cool thing about understanding TikTok is the relationship between TikTok and Instagram. And there is a very strong relationship between TikTok and Instagram because they're competitors. TikTok is blowing up with all this younger generation and all the videos and the content and the influencers and all this stuff. And Instagram wants a piece of that market. They want to beat TikTok, which is why reels are so important, which we talked about in the beginning. They care about reels because reels is their answer to TikTok. So again, why does any of this matter? I'm not on TikTok, I don't care about TikTok, yada, yada, yada. Well, the reason for it is very simple. How do I find what's trending you go on TikTok and search for what's trending in TikTok. And what you may not realize is what's trending on TikTok today will likely be trending on Instagram a week or two weeks from now. So the whole point of it is, is like start to get ahead of it. And what you're doing is if you follow this, it will show you how to, how to search on TikTok, which is essentially, it's just very basic thing, but it'll show you how to search on TikTok and uh, just a YouTube video. But essentially you go on TikTok, you go to the search field, and then you search hashtags. So you find out what's trending. You could look right here and see all the different things that are trending. And then find what's trending and connect it to your world. So you could put what, you know, a hashtag of what's trending and then a hashtag Maplewood, New Jersey, or New Jersey, or real estate, or buying a home, or whatever. Now you're trying to figure out what's trending and what you care about. So once you figure out what's trending and what you care about, now you create content for Instagram, not necessarily for TikTok. You could do both if you want, but create it for Instagram and release it. And by the time you put it out, you're probably right online with the trend line because they're a week or two behind. That's just the way it works. It's a really nice strategy to stay ahead of the curve. So get ahead of the curve is the answer. Number nine. Creators, this whole thought process, they put up a post. This is the post. It said, what makes a great collaboration? And when they put that post up, the person that popped into my brain at that given time was one of our own, Queen Ella. Queen Ella does a fantastic job with collaboration. And I wanna show you an example of what this looks like because Queen's collaborations are probably better than anybody that I know locally. She does a fantastic job with it. So she put up this post most, more recently. It says, let's talk with Queen Ella. So this is the, the, uh, the template that she created. And then she puts in different people in this spot, depending on who she's meeting with at a given time. So she said, let's talk with Dupree Kelly. So 
I didn't really know who Debris Kelly was, although I know his music. But at the time, I didn't necessarily know who he was. He's not somebody who's like in my network, so to speak. So I started looking at what she put out. Now, you can't really read this from where you are, but she said you may have seen him at church. You may have seen him supporting the community. And she's like hashtagging different things. Church, caring, Newark, New Jersey, basketball, legend, celebrity, all these different things. She's like tagging these, you know, these hashtags because sometimes people look for celebrity. Sometimes people search for Newark, New Jersey. She wants to come up on all those feeds because it may be something that is interesting to them. So, but beyond that, beyond the, the, the obvious of the hashtags, who is he? Well, for starters, he's got 32,000 followers. It was also Black History Month, and she put it out in line with Black History Month and said that basically, like, I'm, you know, I'm featuring a black local hero. Like, so that was right on uh, in alignment with the times of, of when she released it. He's also running for politics. Like, he's out there, he's trying to, to run for the uh, West Ward Councilman. So she's tapping into the church community. She's tapping into all the people that are following him. She's tapping into local politics in Newark. She's tapping into Black History Month and all of the stream that's going on with that. And he also happens to be from a hip hop group, Lords of the Underground, years ago, which a lot of people like. That's like old school hip hop. People care about that. So in one fell swoop, she hit bing, 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 all the way around of all these different things that she's connecting with just because she reached out to him, who is a local wannabe councilman. I'm not knocking him with that. He want, he's literally running for council. Of course he wants attention. Of course he wants to drive traffic to him. Why wouldn't he? He's probably talking to anybody with a pulse at this point. Like, that's the, you know, you got to get in front of people. So if that's his thing, and she's now connected with all the people in him, and it's almost like, you know, he's endorsing her by going on this. It's brilliant. It's absolutely brilliant. And it doesn't have to be a councilman. It doesn't have to be a hip hop artist. It doesn't have to be connected to church. You pick and choose who you want to connect with. But what I would do is, if you get, let's just, I'll give you an easy example. If you get a local restaurant that comes out in Maplewood, that's doing an awesome job, that everybody's talking about, the buzz is such and such restaurant. Go into that restaurant, talk to the owner and say, you guys are doing such a phenomenal job, can we do a quick interview? Like, I wanna feature you on my Instagram page because I just wanna push as many people as I possibly can to you guys, you're awesome. Who says no to that? Everybody in history is like, okay, <laughs> you know, you're gonna push people my way, awesome, let's do that. Well, now you have intelligent content that you're connecting to a local buzz and it's easy. All you're doing is asking questions. So tell me about you know, some of your best dishes. Can you show me how you prepare a dish? Like it's simple stuff. Like you could do it with that. You could do it with local businesses. It doesn't have to be necessarily a restaurant. You could do it with people that, you know, the head of the synagogue. Great, like that's the rabbi of the synagogue. How many people does he know? Like, why don't I tap into that person and have a conversation with him and a little bit of an interview about what you guys do for the community? It's so easy if you start thinking outside of the box of who you can connect to and from a, from a selfish reason, for selfish reasons, I should say, how many followers do they have? Can you connect to influencers that are local? Because if you do that, that's like, now you've just tapped into all of their network. The takeaway is pretty simple, is you connect to people that are influencers in and of, and of themselves, and now all of a sudden you get the mutual benefit of each other. Because by the way, Queen is also an influencer. She has 6,000 followers or whatever it is locally. Tap into networks through collaboration, very simple. I am not gonna spend almost any time on this next point, but I just wanna kinda like throw it out as another thing to think about, is takeovers. So if you run a successful takeover, it, what it basically means is, is I'm going to take over somebody else's Instagram account for a day. Like takeovers, if you find the right collaboration, they really work. Like, you know, and if you think about it, now there's another voice on somebody else's account that you could say, like you're almost giving endorsements to a particular business as another local business, thank you for coming, as a no, another local business, and you're getting the benefit of them tapping into your network, them tapping into your, or, you know, vice versa, whatever it is. So it's just a simple process. 
there's a million videos on how to do a successful takeover, what that looks like. I'm not gonna spend any more time on it. It's just something to think about. Number 10. So I always usually do, you know, 10 points or 15 points or 20 points or whatever it is. I didn't for this particular one. I did nine. And then the last one I kind of want to throw out to you. So the last time we were here, Cheryl was here. I know she, she had to leave, but Cheryl was here and she threw out a really awesome talking point for Instagram. And I was like, wow, people in the room were like, that makes sense. What she said, and I'm just going to repeat it. What she said is she said, you know, if you try to do reels with, with audio and you have a business page and you're labeled as a realtor, you're not going to be able to use the, the audio that I was talking about. So what's a workaround for that? What she labeled herself as, she still wanted a business account because she still wanted to be able to promote. She labeled herself as an entrepreneur. So if instead of, if your role is not realtor, if it's entrepreneur, then now for whatever reason, their algorithms allow you to use whatever audio you want. It was a pretty basic thing that makes a world of difference if you're trying to use trend lines. My question to all of you guys is, is there anything that I didn't cover that you're like, this is working for me and it's getting me a return on Instagram? Please. It's an observation that, you know, I post as much as I can on Instagram and Facebook. Personal posts get a ton more recognition. Yeah. A picture of my kid gets a billion likes. A picture of a just sold home gets three likes. Yep. So I guess the answer is to figure out a way to make it all personal. No. So I'm, gonna, I'm, glad, I'm so glad that you said what you just said, because it's like it, you're, you're teeing me up perfectly. So here's what I think about. And you guys, some of you have been with me for a long time, have heard this example before, but I always think of a plumber. Like if a plumber went on Instagram and posted about how many toilets they unclogged today, nobody cares. They don't care. You would never, ever do that if you were a plumber. But realtors run around and say, I sold three houses today. Like, who cares? Like, it's ridiculous. Like, we do it all the time. But like, you know, when you go to make that post and you're like, you know, in the stars and, you know, uh, you know about how wonderful you are, picture the plumber. Like, because I agree with you, you're not going to win that way. But what does win is you could just as easily take a, a cool video of a house that you just sold, like with like, check out this backyard, like it's spectacular, or you know, check out this lifestyle piece. It's like, I'll give you an easy example. Like, how about you, you know, you sell a house on Durand and you literally have a picture of the front and then do a quick video of you walking down the street in fast motion until you get to the train station or until you get to Roman Gourmet or whatever. I mean, naturally it's like, now it's like you're showing the connection between how close it is to town. Like those are the type of things that I would say, the, and I'm not knocking you, don't take it the wrong way, but what you're not doing if you're not getting the connections that you want is you're not creating content that's engaging. You're not creating content that's connecting with people and getting them to be like, awesome. Please, go ahead, making, ladies first. It's about making it personal, like, like, like making, making it like, okay, you sold the house, but like you're bringing your So I'm, I'm gonna, hold on one second. So I wanna, so Anne, I wanna, I'm, can I use you as an example for a second? So she just posted, um, she just uh, put her house on the market, her unit on the market um, on Valley. And I gotta tell you, like if you look at the content that she put out for it, very tastefully done, it really was. It was, I liked the templates, the way that it looked, it looks like it was professionally done. And on top of that, the actual style and design of what she created in your, your home was beautiful. Like, I was more engaged with that than most of the units that I see on the market because I liked it stylistically. Like, I just felt like it was welcoming and it brought me in. And I'm telling you right now, like, 
I see a lot of properties. Like clearly, you know, you know how many listings come my way? Like I see a ton of properties and that's not the biggest of, of properties. I mean, it's gonna sell like, you know, in the threes, let's say. Like there are million dollar homes that were less engaging to me online because she, she really did a great job and I would encourage you to, you know, to check out what she put out. It was, and Margaret. So it really was. I mean, it, it came out beautiful. Tim, please. Hold on one second. I know you guys are sharing. We're, we're going to get to that in one second. Please, Tim. So the most, the most engaged post I put on Instagram was a reel that I did uh, a couple weeks ago of pictures of bathrooms from my, that I've seen from little real broken houses. And yeah. nice, nice, interesting ideas of what happened. I saw bathrooms, threw it together, called in April showers, got some vanities, and threw it onto uh, to Instagram. It's gotten far more traction than anything else. Yeah. I've and the thing is, is if you start, if you just to take it a step further, and you may have done this, well, now if you throw in hashtag bathrooms, hashtag, you know, renovated bathrooms, hashtag blah, 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 whatever it is, like now it starts to trend outside of this area or outside of your network because people will go on trying to get bathroom ideas and they'll say like hashtag bathrooms when they're designing theirs and now they're trying to follow that. It's a very easy thing to do if you really like learn. The only thing I was Or the other thing that just popped into my head was, now's a great time to do gardening. You can go to a local nursery. <coughs> and I don't know, to your point, like, it, you know, just like interview a restaurant owner, maybe just interview someone there. Uh, I, that's so, you, I just kind of bringing your world out there. Yeah, so you, you struck upon something that I have not talked about, but like do-it-yourself videos is a big deal. Mm -hmm. And to, I'll use the gardening point, like we're at the time of year where people are thinking about like the spring, like, you know, gardening and everything else. Like if you go out and you're, you know, speaking to a gardener or a landscaper and you say like, when should you plant blah, 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 whatever it may be, that video may trend because of the time of year. Like, and now you're connecting people to your world. It's still beautifying the neighborhood and the community. It's still like that has that appeal to real estate and home ownership. Like those type of things, there's a connection there. You just have to, you have to be creative. You have to figure out what that connection is. Please. Get out of the comfort zone. Another thing is also your real covers. Yes. It's, it is an awesome point that's being made that I completely missed. And that's why I put this slide up is what I'm missing. Real covers are so important. What is a cover? So what it does is if you think of like the little thumbnail, do I, uh, if you, I, I'm, I'm trying to find one while, give me a second while I'm going through here. So if you go on Instagram on anybody's Instagram page, um, of course I don't have one in sight, but if, so this was like a, a real cover. So like, I just took a quick snapshot of a particular thing and- Is that a scene from the video? That's, that's a scene that's from the video, but it doesn't have to be, and that's the point. Yeah. So like, if you want it to be a scene from the video, you could take like a thumbnail, for, it's a thumbnail is probably the best way to explain it. You know, you could take a thumbnail from that video or you could add in your own real cover, which basically gives you, like it might just be more attractive to a particular topic or whatever, whatever it is. Um, can you do that in Instagram You can. You get, well, you can't necessarily, you can import if you want to bring in something that's not part of that video, just to be clear. Yeah.
you know, it gives you an opportunity to like catch someone's attention in a way that they'll automatically want to click on your video instead of like, let me see what this is about. They already know, like, oh, this is something that's catching my attention. What do you charge for Instagram lessons? <laughs> <laughs> You gotta build one of those things on your profile. Just send them there, please. I'm gonna talk to you afterwards. I just did a Mother's Day post like the other day, and I, it was like pictures of my son and I, but it was just a bunch of different shots, and it was a reel that I did. But I didn't want to just put like the, the first the first picture up, so I actually put like a sonogram picture, the sonogram picture, which was. The first one because I wanted everyone to think maybe I was pregnant. And like, like That's that, brilliant. I was like, I was like, everyone's gonna think I'm pregnant and I'm putting this on a grand picture. But it was really just like the 16 years of having That's kids. that's absolutely brilliant. You got me. Like Yeah. But I knew that the Instagram shop was gonna like get everyone's And that's that is that is a perfect example. That's a perfect example. Alright, so we're 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 almost coming to an end. Um, does anybody have something that's like so pressing that you have to give as an example? Otherwise I'm just gonna move on for it. How about having a real contest? We could do that. We could do that. We could have a we could we could have fun with that. I'll think about that. Um, please. Shout it out, I can't hear you. Okay, but in order for all of this to work, I was speaking to somebody and you have to be really consistent. Yes. It's true. Yeah, consistency is key. There's no doubt about it. You gotta have a rhythm to it. I'm glad you brought that up because that is a, a, definitely a missed point. And also, like, the music you use yeah. matters. Yeah, trending music, that's yeah, definitely. Music. Yeah. All right, wait, 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 wait. Everybody hang in there for one more second. Um, I always end with a bonus. So this, this particular bonus is three very quick things. So the first one is, who are you following? Like, and if you guys have somebody that you're like, this person is awesome to follow, send them my way. I'm happy to compile a list and shoot it out to the group. I won't waste everybody's time right here and now. The second thing is, pick three people in the room and connect with them. Like you guys were exchanging before, pick three people in the room, seriously do it. Pick three people in the room and basically say like, follow me on Instagram, what's your Instagram? You'll be surprised, like just the, the energy that goes on in this room, you're gonna learn from one another and it'll just build your following. Like that's the whole point of this is to help start to build your following. And engaging with each other too. Like if you see somebody yeah. post something, like you guys, so I'm glad you brought that up. This whole idea of an abundance mentality, like there is enough business for every person in this room. And if you guys go out there and you start to help one another by liking your posts and commenting and sharing, we will collectively help one another. There's no doubt about it because Instagram doesn't know that we're all in this room together. They might because they follow us everywhere. But they don't necessarily know. Like you're gonna fool an algorithm if, if 100 people in our office start really engaging and helping one another, you're gonna get other people from outside of the office, it's gonna get promoted to more of those people because Instagram's gonna be like, you know what? This is relevant. Do it. The last thing I have for you guys, and I'm gonna, I should have did this out of, I did this out of order. Do this in one second. The last question is, did you learn anything? What was your favorite part of today's session? What did you learn that's like, oh my God, I need to do this? The highlights. The highlights? So capturing highlights and making them basically part of, you know, how you organize your, your profile. Anything else? And basically formatting my page. Formatting your profile, that's a big one. Yeah. Both of those, and they kind of go hand in hand with one another. Tim, covers. real covers. There you go, Siobhan. <laughs> Please. Tagging yourself the creator, I didn't know about that one. The creator one? Yeah, I learned about that while I was putting this together. But, please. Do you have to tag yourself or put an at at yourself? Because I was tagging myself very early. I would put an at. I would put, so you're, you're talking about what's, what, what, no, what, what Cyrus does? Yeah. I would, I would do at Lara LaCorey or, or yeah, yeah. whatever your handle is. So what is yes. that, what's the difference then? I mean. Um, hashtags like are searchable things where ats are like tagged to a profile. Got it. 
Got it. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, like the tags are going to specifically go out, and then the ads are like coming back to you. Got it. Correct, yes. Okay. Anything else? Asking questions to engage with the. Questions to engage, that's another good one. Guys, this only works if you do it. Like, consistently, to Carl's point, it works if you do it. Like, I'm just gonna finish with this. Tom Ferry put up, execution is the greatest degree of separation between you and your competitors. It's so true. If you execute, that is the difference between you and everybody else. That's it. That's the difference. <laughs> that was the other thing, the, uh, that woman's blender with yeah. inspiring quotes. Yeah. Like, I'm always sending them to my kids, but I should really put it in Yeah, you just brain. build up. You're connecting with more people that way. So, oh, I'm sorry. You're good? So, thank you guys as always.